Greetings Earthlings, welcome back to Code with Shrini. This lecture will primarily be talking about output property binding or in other words, how to pass data between components in Angular. Okay, so in my previous lecture called routing and navigation, if you missed it, if you missed it go please go check out the uh, tutorial in the top right corner of this video. Right, so I left out a minor implementation detail regarding the login mechanism wherein if a user successfully logs in, the login menu doesn't change at all. So if you go ahead and log in, the login menu, I need to implement something here because I need to tell the user that the user has logged in and it should change into a log out uh, menu and possibly include the user's name in it. So that will be more of a user friendliness and user interface uh, design okay so I missed that in the previous section and I didn't cover that because uh, we were not dealing with uh, such implementation we are dealing only with routing and navigation but here we will complete that okay so well now we will implement the change in this lecture okay so in our app component template let's go to our app component I, I want to create a custom event for our login selector. So this is our login selector, uh, which wherein it generates our renders our template for our login. So our login template resides over the login directory, which is here and which is uh, in turn getting it from our login component over here. Let me expand this. Yes. Okay. So 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 yes our login form is rendered from our login component html so this is what ideally you see over here okay and and yeah let's close this up and then sorry for switching back and forth now okay i want to create a custom event for our login selector like a change um so that whatever happens in this login form uh, we can propagate those information or we can publish those information to a parent component such as the app component ideally the app component is our parent component and the child component is a login form or a login component so let's create a custom event called change and now what we do is we will go ahead and create on login event file okay so in our app component let's create a method called on login event fire okay so the, the name of this method it can be pretty much anything but i want to make it a bit meaningful so that i create it so whenever a a change event happens uh, this will ideally be calling up the method in our app component ts okay so this is it i'm gonna just get rid of uh, these things right i'm going to create a method like this and then console them just close this up console.log and it should say on login event file okay so this is pretty much it and so far we are good to go and there are no errors in our console let me put this back here and then see yes the console says nothing here so we are good to go okay and then to get this piece working right to get this method working uh, we need to go to the login component class file which is right over here let me close this up and then in the login component okay on the top we need to create a output decorator function output right output from the angular code okay um, now then I'm gonna define a field over here which says uh, and okay one thing you should remember is the field name should be the same name that you have given as your custom event which is change okay so it should be change and then it should be defined as an output function with change okay so we are not there yet so and we should initialize this change field into a class called event emitter right so once you do once you declare an event emitter class initialized an event emitter class it will automatically include in your but this is not the event emitter from events we should be calling up 
an event emitter from our angular core so let's get rid of this okay and now finally in our login method after successfully log logs in okay we need to publish this uh, publish this uh, event so um let's go to our login component in our login component html you you might have noticed a login method is called when you click at it login function login is not a function which means our component in our component we need, didn't define our login method so let's do that now so login and let's console this here as well which says login function call okay okay and then login function call right now the next interesting bit is um, we need to raise an event to do that um, this dot change and we have a method called emit right I'll just keep it like this if you notice we have this method right because we initialized it as an event emitter class so obviously we got this this one up there and now here we're gonna publish our event that basically means we are going to notify others or all the other components that something has happened okay so now let's test it I'm gonna do a fake login here okay so this is on event login event file that's called from here so what I'm gonna do is I'll just call it as app component for the sake of easiness so that you will know from where these methods are getting fired and this is login component now let's test that again so from the login component an event is published or fired and that in turn subscribed by our app component and it is fired so by this way output property is worked via our output property binding okay so this is how the entire cycle works okay now the next step is um, pass an event data to our app component okay that's the most interesting part so um, not just uh, emitting our method we can also pass an optional arguments to our method called emit so let's go ahead and do some optional argument passing so ideally in this scenario in this scenario that you see here is we are going to pass not just if the user is logged in or not we're going to pass if the successful login is there we're going to pass the users information such as the username which is user obviously this is a fake implementation so COVID Srini and another property called user type which says internal or break this code a little bit for the readability's sake and then role obviously admin role okay now we are good to go now let's head back to our app component and then oh before that we need to modify this method on even login fired property binding method to accept that argument so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass dollar event okay here the dollar event represents the actual JavaScript object with a property called uh, new value okay so also in the app component this since this is an object we're going to have an argument called um, event args so so that's the kind of a naming conventions All right so it'll be event args and then event Logs. let's pass that to our console log and see if this thing works and if we can pass the the user details to our app component which is the parent of our login click on it and obviously we got that so this is how we pass data from one component to another component preferably the parent component okay to make this as a strict type checking we can create an interface called logged in user and with this we can get compile time checking to make our code a bit more strong so let's head over to our login component now what we're gonna do we gonna create a new interface called export interface export we, we are obviously exposing that name logged in user event logs okay and it has user as a string 
user type as a string and role as a string okay so this is this looks really good and in our method right let's go to the app component and in our method we can we can set our interface here logged in user event args so once you do that it's automatically imported uh, at the top of our page so this is done and in our app component class we're going to add is user login field okay so that we can switch the login button uh, or the menu item once the user successfully logs in so it'll be is user logged equals false at the moment and user will be obviously our logged in user events are okay this all looks nice right we missed one more finer detail in this implementation right so yes and we need we need to add if even args dot user right so this is i mean i know this is a bit lame and primitive but uh, for this demo to get get this demo working i think this is fair enough but in the real world scenario this will be entirely different and uh, for example if user is not logged in we'll be having something else in place of the event args okay for now this is a mock implementation so we assume that the user is logged in and let's say this is this dot is user logged in as a true and then we gonna set this user equals our event args which basically the user details all right okay so now let's go ahead to our template and modify um based on the the user login right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a structural directory called ngf and then we're gonna check is user logged in right so if not if the user is not logged in we're going to show a login button whereas we're going to copy this code and then reuse that again and if the user is logged in obviously we're going to have a logout button with i'm going to open up a bracket and then interpolation that says user dot user which is a username right now log in i think happens right so this is the mistake and now logged in now instantly you will notice logout uh, the menu change to logout and with the username so this is uh, just a small implementation a demo we can extend this information with this piece of lecture uh, into a larger complex implementation okay so the lesson we learned here is using output decorator class uh, where it is yeah over here we can publish uh, we can subscribe to any operation published from our login component which is a we are publishing it over here okay so dot emit publishes our um, output event okay in our case we are publishing a successful login and passing user details to our app component both are uh, different component and app component is a parent of our login component okay this is how we pass data from one component to another and finally we need to alias our output decorator function right over here so and make this our make this code hard to break so in future if we change this field name to something else okay our output method still works okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna alias this as change here so if in future the requirement changes and the field name has to be changed then obviously still the change implementation over here works okay without breaking any logic in the app component um template okay so this is how we pass data from one component to another component right and finally and finally 
Thank you for watching this lecture. If you like it, please give it a like and if you have any suggestions or com comments, do write them below and finally subscribe to my channel to get the latest update. Thank you so much.